Oh, yeah, into some very cool practice problems here. We're going to be practicing our newfound definite integral properties. These are very typical kinds of problems that I've seen in many textbooks along the way, some I've definitely taught in my classes for many years. It says, given the following information, evaluate each definite integral. So we're told that the definite integral evaluated from 1 to 3 of x squared is equal to 26 thirds. That's a true story. The area from 1 to 3 between x squared and the x-axis is 26 over 3. From 1 to 3 of x, dx is equal to 4. And from 1 to 3 of, technically there's an invisible 1 there. Just know that there's an invisible 1 there uh, is equal to 2. So these are all representative of areas over the same exact intervals. And what we're going to now find is how to basically manipulate with our rules and use this information to find these definite integrals. So in A, we're told the integral from 1 to 3, the definite integral from 1 to 3 of 2x squared. Recall that that's the same as two times. We can factor out that coefficient, get in the habit of doing that. And if you need to, review those rules. So definitely go over those rules from the very previous video before you check these out. It'll make it easier. So 2 times the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared. Well, that's this. And we know that's 26 thirds. So this would be equal to 2 times 26 over 3. And that simplifies to 52 thirds. That's it. Not so bad. All right, we're going to do some more rule following. Here we're told the definite integral from 1 to 3 of x squared minus x. Hmm. Well, we've got two different integrals that have each of those components. So remember that you can break this integral up as the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared dx minus the integral of 1 to 3 uh, of x dx. Ah, well, that is equal to 26 thirds. Nice. And this is equal to 4. And when we simplify that, that's 26 thirds minus 12 thirds. In most places, that would be 14 thirds. Not bad. All right, keep going. Here, ooh, this is a little bit of a challenging one. We've got the integral from 1 to 2 of technically there's an invisible 1 there, dx, plus the integral from 2 to 3. Well, isn't this just the area from 1 to 2 plus the area from 2 to 3? And the area from 1 to 2 plus 2 to 3 would be 1 to 3. That would slide out and accumulate everything. So if you're looking at this on a graph, it might be easy to see here. That's the graph of y equals 1. And if we go from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3, that's the same as just doing the whole exact area, right? So that'd be from 1 to 3 of 1 dx. And that's equal to 2. Right, we already have that. Nice. OK, letter D. Letter D is a very cool one. It's basically a composition of a few rules. So you got x squared plus 2x minus 5. Well, given this information, we'll split them up into three different integrals. So we'd have the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared dx. We have that here. The integral of, and I'm going to factor out a 2 here, 2 times the integral from 1 to 3 of x dx, taking out that coefficient here so that it resembles that, because we have the number for it, minus, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the 5 times the integral dx from 1 to 3, just factoring out that minus 5 from here so that we see that we've got that exact integral. So now what we have is the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared. That's 26 thirds. Nice. Next, we've got the integral from 1 to 3 of 2 times hmm, x dx. Well, that's 2 times this, which would be 2 times 4. So plus 2 times, that's 4 minus 5 times this integral we know is equal to 2. That's all it is. You're separating things out so you get these exact integration, uh, well, these exact integral expressions uh, so that you can evaluate them. So 26 thirds plus 8 is what that's going to amount to. 26 thirds plus 8 minus 10. This will be negative 2 plus 26 thirds. Uh, that'll end up being 20 over 3 when all the dust settles. Not bad. Not bad at all. OK, this one here is an interesting one. Notice that we've got the bounds switched. So using this graph here, instead of integrating from left to right, we're integrating from 3 to 1, which would be right to left. That would switch the sign, because even though our heights are all positive, right, our right to left, well, what happens? Ooh, our width is now negative. Right? We're going backwards in time. Now it's for x dx, not for this graph here. So it's for x dx. So instead of having positive 4, the answer would be negative 4. That's it. You could also look at it this way and say, well, if I switch the signs like this, then I get the opposite of 1 to 3x dx, which is negative 4. And to draw out that exact graph, 
that graph x looks like this. And instead of accumulating the area again from left to right, we're going right to left. Not bad. All right. Ooh. Ignore all this. I could have put an elephant in there as long as it was a continuous function. If I integrate from negative 1 to negative 1, that's 0. Anytime you're integrating from the same x value to the same x value, you're not accumulating any area. We're not actually sweeping anything out, and therefore the area is 0. That's it. So classic problems that exercise you in your abilities with your newfound definite integral properties. I'll see you in the next video.